he started tagging at school with his friend Michael. And what happened was they got caught up. And because it was in the bathroom, it was on a mirror. And mirrors and windows are the most expensive things to replace almost. It's ridiculous. Like if you tag, I heard um, people went down to like a downtown area in the Bay Area somewhere. And they they painted up like these huge windows on a building. And it cost them like $100,000 in the end. So it was like a big, it was like a big skyscraper building. And it had like all the architecture stuff going on, but yeah, Windows always end up being the most stuff to tag, and we learned that the hard way eventually, but he had a big old fine, and he had to go to peer court and all this stuff, and then through that, the cops, that was like their break in the case, I guess, because the cops, they had nothing to do in that city, so they probably were just focusing on us, because like I said, it's all white city, there's like low crime, nothing's really going on, so we were the we were the big bad criminals of the town some eighth graders doing stupid ass graffiti that was never going to be seen by most people because we like kind of hit it because we're too scared to do it in the open but anyways um that was kind of like the break in the case and what they did is they linked those names that he was tagging on the mirrors in the bathroom with with all the stuff he's done outside and the thing that happened was <coughs> sorry um They'd see, like, out when they go on the street, they'd see his tags and they see my tags. They see, like, all together. They see all the graffiti work from me, Nick, Mason, and then Michael. And then, uh, it's kind of weird not thinking about all the names start with M, because my name's Miles. But anyways, it's besides the point. Um, they they kind of linked them all together, so we're, like, a little crew. And we all wrote BTC, which is our crew, Bomb the City. And bombing means, like, repeatedly tag and pretty much destroy stuff with your tags. So... Bomb the City was our little weak ass crew and they kind of like it started like, going through and like looking through like all these different tags and stuff all the pieces and things we've done around the city and they linked the ones he did to ours and so what they did is they like kind of cause my friend Nick who was the one who got caught he all, his friend also got caught up and they knew the the friend who was a year younger than us, he would he'd rat us out because he was like he was just a little bitch, and so the cops went to him, and then it was like, so who's been uh, who you been tagging with, blah blah, and he didn't really tag that much himself. He was just kind of being there to be cool, and he gave us paint and stuff, so we were kind of like using him for paint and I don't know stuff like that, and he kind of just tagged along with us. I mean, just like hung out with us. He write, but he was really 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 bad, so he didn't write that much. <coughs> uh, sorry again and um so they went to him and they started and they interrogated him at school kind of and just like grilled him and he broke and he's just he snitched us all out basically and he's like this name is miles base 45 miles and josters mason and i can't remember what nick's name was but nick had a name and he kind of like gave all our names to the face he put the name to the face pretty much <laughs> And so, the cops caught on, and then, before the cops actually caught on to this, what happened was my parents, they, they were catching on to me, because it was very obvious, like, when I'm getting into graffiti, they see me drawing, and I have paint cans in the garage, and I tag in the backyard on cardboard, it's, it's pretty obvious, and then, I guess they seen my tags around the city somewhere, and they, like, looked in my sketchbook, and they, like, matched them, it's like, alright, it's a match, he's been doing graffiti, and so, they kind of caught on, and... So what happened is they <coughs> they sat me down and they told told me how it is like I got in trouble I I didn't even leave my house for like a month after that because I got in so much trouble. They, it wasn't like the kind of trouble where they're like yelling at you. It's the kind of trouble like, well, you did this, so now this is what you're gonna do. And whew, that was the stuff I did. The the punishment was hard. I was cleaning. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't hang out with my friends. I couldn't go to the park across the street from my house. I couldn't do anything. So I was on lockdown, for real, so, like I said, the cops kind of caught on with all that stuff that happened, and they came, the cop came to my house, and he sat down with my family and me, and then he's, or my mom, my dad, and me, and he's like, so this is what he's been writing, this is what's been going on, it's like, or, I don't know, he's kind of being very general about it, and just being like, we think he's in this group, or he might be in this group, and 
if my parents didn't know, they would have given into it, like, oh, wait, is he tagging, blah, blah, blah. But the fact that they didn't know, they did, they're trying to keep me out of trouble. So, like, okay, they never, like, confirmed or denied, you know, and I never confirmed or denied anything they said. Like, um, he showed me pictures, like, do you recognize any of this stuff? And, like, a lot of it was mine and my friends, and I was like, yeah, I've seen it around the city. And that's how all it is. I never said it was mine. I never signed anything saying it was mine. And then, uh, they left, and or the cop left, and later on, um, later on, about a month later, maybe, all my friends ended up going to different courts at their own different times and stuff, and, like, <clears throat> getting everything settled themselves, and they all ended up with, like, a couple hours community service, slap on the wrist, basically, no fines, no probation, anything, and, um, I had to, for some reason, we moved, and I think that the city might have gotten mixed up with our moving, and they couldn't track us for a little bit, and then they found us, and there's like, oh yeah, Miles needs to appear in court um, on this date, and this was like a year later, or a year and a half later, maybe? It was really weird. So then I ended up going to court over there, and uh, I went to court there for a while. It, courts are very, very slow process. What happens the first day... You, the first time you go to court, you go, they say, this is what's going to happen, these are your rights, blah, 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 and then it's like, alright, goodbye. And then, they had like all of us in there at once, all the kids that were in the hall. They brought us all in and they said basically that, and then we all went home, and it was like, okay, that was a waste of our time. And then, a couple weeks later, you go in, and then the attorneys have their little, st really stupid battle, like, I don't know, they're speaking their little lawyer code the whole time, so I don't really understand a lot, but... She's trying to reduce my fines, my uh, attorney, whatever. I didn't have a paid one, I had like the public ones. And um, and that's also why my other friends got off, because most of them, or I think two out of three of them got the, uh, they bought, or they paid for attorneys, so they had like good attorneys that gone through it. And then my other friend did peer court, so he got off with a slap on the wrist also, because peer court was within the schools, like a program for people who got in trouble, so yeah. And then so I did this whole court thing, and she's getting my stuff reduced. I had like, and the thing I was like, kind of like chipping off is that everyone had like fines under their name, and mine was the biggest. But after talking to my friends, I found out none of them had to pay a fine. So I was like, okay, hopefully I don't have to pay this fine because it's pretty big. And so what happened was I moved down to the Bay Area, and they transferred the case over to Alameda County. And here they link, since we were like a group of people, we're like four people, and we're like a crew, we're like considered the gang, basically. Um... So since they, like, characterized me as, like, a gang, or categorized me as a gang, sorry, um, I, I got, like, harsher, I got treated more harshly by the, the court, and the judge, like, and that guy was an asshole, too. Now he's nicer, but the first time he wouldn't even look up at me, he just gave me, like, the hardest of all the things, he's just like, um, alright, he gets 40 hours community service, $1,200 fine, uh, six months formal probation, which means your probation officer has to check up on you and they get to do all this different stuff. They came to my school a couple times to check up on me. And I never broken my probation or anything because I'm actually like a really good kid. That was the only thing I've ever done to get in trouble in my life. And so, uh, basically I got this whole thing and this is actually, and by the time I actually got that sentence of like my probation of the 40 hours and the $1,200 fine and all that different stuff. This is already when I was sophomore. So I got through my junior, I mean, I got through my freshman year. Because it happened in 8th grade. Then that whole year went by where nothing happened and they called me. I went to court for a while and then a little bit into my around Halloween-ish time. And um, so around October of my uh, my sophomore year, they that's when I finally got my, set, my real deal. They finally so sorted everything out and then they gave me my um, they gave me my probation and all the little things that went along with it, all the fun treats. So <clears throat> basically, I've been on probation as well. I did my 40 hours of community service. I served my six months, and now I'm a senior in high school. So it's been almost two years since I've been on probation. And the reason why I can't get off probation is because the fine is twelve hundred dollars. You didn't hear me at the beginning. It's one thousand two hundred dollars. And I don't, I don't even know how, I don't have this money. And 
only way I could possibly get a little bit of this money is by selling my bike, but it's going to be hard for me to sell my bike because I actually still do like it. Even though I don't ride it, it's just really hard because I rode that thing every single day for like a year and a half straight, like every single day. If I didn't ride it for one day, the next day, oh my god, I felt extremely rusty. It's like when you don't play Call of Duty for two weeks and then you get back on, you're just like, what am I doing? So that just shows you like how much dedication I had into this bike. So it's pretty much the only way out a little bit. My parents don't really want to pay it, but they're going to end up having to help me because I can't like <laughs> go on like this. And I know I could get a job, but I guess I got to like, I should be focusing on school. I am a pretty smart person, but I am like, I struggle like with getting my assignments in. I understand pretty much everything, no problem, but like, I have this lack of motivation in school and lack to complete my work, so having a job may not be the right thing for me right now until I kind of sort out my motivational skills. So <clears throat> that's basically the story of my little past couple years of my life on um, on how I've been on probation and you guys can just uh, get a little bit into my personal life and I think I'm just going to end it here because it's, I don't want to get more recent. I might have another episode of this, like, getting to know Gorilla Thriller or whatever this is going to be. So, hopefully, um, hopefully you guys enjoy this if you watch through both parts. Because it's probably going to be two parts if I, and I didn't check the time, but it's probably pretty long. But anyways, see you guys later. Hopefully you like this. Um, don't forget to leave me a comment. Just anything you thought, or if you have any questions about what I said, just go ahead and leave me a comment. And uh, I'll definitely reply back to those. So, see you guys later. Peace.